Vegas 21 has been out for a little less than a month now, and after playing around with it for a bit, I gotta say, I'm a fan. Let's talk about it. Before we dive in, just a quick bit of disclosure. This video is not sponsored by Vegas Creative Software. They didn't pay me any money. They didn't give me any talking points. That being said, they did give me a license so I could test out Vegas and make this review. And I'm fully aware that some of you are going to shout from the rooftops of my comment section that because of that, this video is sponsored. So while you're shouting, I'm gonna go ahead and do my review. Cool? Let's get started. Taking it from the top, I noticed something really cool when I opened up Vegas 21 for the first time. In the dialog box that pops up where you can set your resolution and frame rate, there was an extra option that I don't remember seeing before. Now, when you set up your first project in Vegas, you can choose to have your source viewer on or off. Now, I know from the comments in my previous Vegas reviews that the majority of you just drop your footage on the timeline and trim it from there, but I personally prefer having that source viewer available, especially for narrative short films and dialogue scenes. So. I thought that was pretty awesome. Once my project was open, I got a chance to check out Vegas Hub where I could get access to a list of new features, my account information, Vegas content, which has a whole bunch of stock footage, and even some example projects that can help you get started with Vegas if you're new to the software. By the way, Vegas content has a whole new look now, and it's so much easier to find what you're looking for. Good job, Vegas. From there, I used the Explorer to quickly and easily import my footage and audio into my project so I could start cutting together my timeline. All in all, the whole setup process is really easy and there are a ton of options for UI layout, settings, keyboard shortcuts. Basically, you can set up Vegas however you want. It's really flexible. That being said, if you're new to editing, I wouldn't dive too deep into the settings and layout options. Flexibility has its perks, but it can easily become a confusing mess if you don't know exactly exactly what you're looking for in an editing workflow. Also, if you're new to editing or even just new to Vegas, I highly suggest those example projects. They're a big help. As far as cutting footage is concerned, I gotta be honest, it took me a bit to not feel like a bumbling idiot when using Vegas, which was by no means anyone's fault other than my own. Vegas is just a lot different than DaVinci Resolve. It's actually a lot different than most other NLEs that I've tried. There's different keyboard shortcuts, tools are called different things, and they're in different locations. Some of the default settings like automatic cross dissolves and crossfades are things that I wouldn't normally use. And on top of that, I tend to try and stick with the default settings as much as possible when I make these reviews. So at first it was a little difficult doing one of the most technically simple parts of making a video. There is one thing that drives me nuts though, and I'm sure there will be a bunch of comments about this, but I have to say it. In Resolve, if I click up at the top of the timeline where the timecode is, my playhead will move. But if I click in the actual timeline, like on a clip or an empty space, the playhead stays where it is. In Vegas, no matter where I click, the playhead jumps to where I clicked, which kind of makes it really hard to place my playhead somewhere and just have it stay there. If there's a way to change that or turn it off, please let me know in the comments because I haven't found it and it's maddening. Also, frame by frame audio scrubbing is a must. By default, audio scrubbing only happens when you drag the playhead. I can't hear audio when I'm using the arrow keys to move frame by frame. And that's a pretty big part of my workflow and result. Other than those two things though, I was able to get my timeline together and it did get easier as I got used to the differences in controls and settings. Let's move on to color grading, which has for the most part stayed the same. There's still that awesome color grading panel, which really gives you all of the tools you need to create a decent color grade. But there are a couple of changes to Vegas 21 that are going to make color grading even more effective than it was when I did my review on Vegas 20. First, we now have HSL sliders and curves, which is absolutely amazing. Second, we now have adjustment events, which are essentially adjustment clips or adjustment layers in other software. And we can use the color grading effect on those adjustment events, which means we can have multiple instances of the color grading effect on a single video clip, giving you the ability to use a more professional color grading workflow right within Vegas. It's a total game changer. Moving on to audio, there's 
nothing new, really, which is kind of a shame because like I said in my last couple of Vegas reviews, the existing tools could use a bit of an overhaul. Don't get me wrong, the existing tools work and you have everything you need, but they look a little outdated and now with so many possibilities for AI powered plugins, I really think that Vegas team is missing out on some really cool opportunities on the audio front. What I would love to see is an audio version of the color grading panel. Maybe something with normalization, an EQ, compressor, limiter, maybe even a loudness meter. That way you can do most of your dialogue work using that instead of adding a bunch of standalone effects. I don't know, it's just an idea. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. All of that being said, Vegas does now support VST3, which means you can use things like Waves or Isotope plugins. So. That's pretty awesome. Okay, now the fun stuff. Let's talk about visual effects, titles, transitions, and all that fancy stuff. Now, for the most part, everything is the same. You've got a ton of transitions, effects, masks, trackers, and the for the more complicated stuff, you can send clips over to Vegas FX, which is basically the Vegas version of After Effects. Now, on top of all that, we've got some new stuff, like a special version of the Mocha Tracker that's made specifically for Vegas, a couple new GL transitions, and my personal favorite, Z-Depth. Now, if you're familiar with DaVinci Resolve's depth mask, then you're familiar with Z-Depth. Essentially, it analyzes your footage and determines what elements are in the foreground, background, and everywhere in between. You can then create masks based on those depths and use them for color grading or compositing. It's not quite perfect yet, but it is super fun to play around with. There are some other new updates too, like quick uploads, which makes it easier to upload files to Vegas Cloud from any device, and the text-to-speech feature is now moved to the cloud, allowing for quicker updates and a lot more language options. All in all, the Vegas team has been able to add a bunch of new features and improvements without getting rid of that classic Vegas feel. Now, one more new thing before we get into my final thoughts. Let's talk about pricing because yes, that's new too. And bear with me because this is a lot to take in. Let's start out with the different packages available. As usual, you have Vegas Pro Edit, which comes with Vegas Pro 21. If you're looking for a little bit more, you've got Vegas Pro Suite, which comes with Vegas Pro 21, SoundForge, Acid Music Studio, Mocha Vegas, and Boris FX Premat Studio. And finally, we have Vegas Pro Post, which comes with everything in suite, plus Vegas FX, Vegas Image, and the pro versions of SoundForge and Acid. Now, all of these packages have both perpetual licenses, monthly subscriptions, and annual subscriptions. And now there's a third option where you can pay an annual subscription for two years, and then when that's all done with, you get to keep the software with a perpetual license. By the way, if you want specific numbers, you can find them at the link in the description. So here's the big pricing question. Why would you want a subscription when you can get a perpetual license with a one-time Payment. Answer, well, you get more stuff. Subscriptions not only come with the software, they also come with cloud storage, the text-to-speech and speech-to-text features, and Vegas content. But obviously, if you don't want any of that, then the Perpetual is a great option that'll save you money. So what are my final thoughts? Is Vegas the best NLE on the market? Should you ditch your current editing software and start using Vegas instead? Well. It's kind of complicated. Let me explain. While the new features that have been added to Vegas Pro over the past few years are awesome, it is starting to feel like the existing tools are getting a bit neglected. So it sometimes feels like Vegas is in this weird middle ground between cutting edge and a little bit outdated. And considering Vegas started off as audio software, it's a little weird to me that there haven't been any audio updates recently. I'm hoping that changes soon. But like I said, Vegas Pro 21 is a great NLE with more package and pricing options than almost every other NLE on the market. The flexibility to customize the UI to fit your workflow is great, and the new features that are being added are nothing short of awesome. Plus, I still kind of love the fact that Vegas operates like a doll. So no, Vegas is not the best NLE on the market, but that's not because it's a bad NLE, it's simply because there is no such thing as the best NLE, only the best NLE for you. Here's the deal, Vegas isn't trying to be Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve or any of the other Hollywood level NLEs. Instead, Vegas is targeting the professional internet creator, the wedding filmmaker, even people 
who make casual short films. And for people who make that kind of content, Vegas is a great NLE. It's easy to use and has all of the tools that you need. But if you're looking for an NLE that has all the tools you need to make a Hollywood level film, you're likely going to be a little disappointed with Vegas. Basically, it all comes down to choosing the right tool for the right job. So Vegas will be linked below if you wanna check them out. And while you're down there, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Then go check out this video right here to learn about some awesome plugins that I use in both Resolve and Vegas. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.